So eventually, I hope this testing for um, SARS-CoV-2 becomes an ELISA test. So ELISA, how this works, is we need the antibodies. We bind, so let's say, let's imagine we're designing, let's design this ELISA test uh, for SARS. All right, let's say we're making an immuno Assay. So this is called ELISA. So ELISA stands for enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. So what does that mean using an enzyme? So it's linked with an enzyme, immuno meaning it uses antibodies assay. So let's imagine we're designing a test for SARS-CoV-2. So the way these tests work, we have this plate. This plate has 96 little wells in it that hold like 200 microliters of fluid or 0.2 mils. So these wells go all the way down through this plate. 96 wells on this plate. I don't know how, if I drew the correct amount, probably not. So this, you can do 96 tests at once. So let's zoom in to one of these wells and see what's happening. What's happening, one of these little wells, and how do we, so this immunosorbent assay. So this assay part means we have to have some sort of fluorescent detection in this. First, you have to have the antibodies. So I talked about antibodies earlier. Antibody is this, we'll draw this primary antibody here. So there's two little parts like this, and then there's a part that goes down like this. So this is the general structure of an antibody. And then there's some um, disulfide bonds that hold these structures together. Right here is a binding region on this antibody. This region binds specific. So this is the, it's called the variable region. Thousands of different antibodies floating around yourself right now. And if you, this is what a vaccine does. It builds up your memory response to produce these antibodies against that particular infection. So if you get the vaccines for human papillomavirus, your body has the memory cells knowing what human papillomavirus looks like. So that if you ever come in contact with it, you mount this response, you mass produce these antibodies, and you never actually get infected by that or pass it on. These variable regions bind specifically to specific molecules. So we can use that to our benefit in these assays. So an assay is a massive way to get a lot of data at one point. So that coronavirus, as so this is that coronavirus again that we've drawn so many times so far, has that spike protein sitting off of it. Now I'm not saying the spike protein would be what is used here, but this spike protein, if your immune system has the antibody response to tag it, would bind to these little receptors right here. So here, it would bind like this. This is a smaller version of it, like that. It would tag these receptors. So here would be another one. I'm drawing little Ys, uh, binding to these receptors and tagging them with these variable regions. Again, it's specifically binding to this S protein, and we can use this to our advantage. So one thing we could do is we could take a blood sample from the individual to test them. So they come by, we take a serum sample, we spin it out, and we isolate the regions of where these antibodies would be. They have a certain weight, so we can isolate them and where they would be. Then we put them in this plate here. We put these antibodies in this plate. They're all sitting, I'm just gonna draw a little Ys now. They're all sitting down here in this plate. And because this plate is plastic, they actually kind of stick to it as well. This one is now called a primary antibody. So this would be one way to do this test. So you take the serum and you find then a secondary antibody that now binds to this primary antibody. And one thing with this secondary antibody is that, so if that's the primary antibody, Let's draw the secondary one over here. So then this would be secondary. And it has a region. This variable region recognizes the primary. And it contains this dye that fluoresces. How do we use this then? So what this does is we add this into this solution then. So let's switch back to this one. And it actually binds down here. So you would bind it down here. And so here, blue would be binding here. And any that don't bind, you'd wash them away in what's called this washing step. And then they carry this fluorescent dye. And if you hit this little well here with the correct wavelength of light to make that dye fluoresce, it will emit that fluorescence and glow. So that'd be a positive test. So that'd be, that's, I'm guessing that's the design direction that testing will go. So then if we test this 96 well plate, if this one's green, that one's green, this one's green here, we know these ones are positive tests. Uh, and then if there are other ones that don't change color, that would be a negative test. And not only that, this can sometimes do concentration. So what is the amount of antibody this person's produced? Now we could take this one step further and we can design this antibody, this primary one. And we could take someone's serum 
and actually plate the viruses in here. So if we plate the viruses in here with that spike protein sticking off, I know I haven't, oops, I don't wanna be that big. Uh, with the spike protein sticking off, we can then tag that primary and have a glow tag on that one, which would be really cool. This requires putting it into a machine. Uh, so this 96 well plate slides into this like little micro plate reader. There's a little door on it that slides out and it has to be uh, plugged in to a PC. So this is a PC and this is a keyboard. And then here you have the screen and then this gives you the positive and negative readings that you then analyze. But yeah, I, I can see a future test turning into this because look at this, you can test, obviously you'd have positive and negative controls on this one plate, but you could do massive tests. And the key is you just have to raise these antibodies so you can use um, mice, you can use sheep, you can use rabbits to make these antibodies, meaning unfortunately you have to give them the pathogen to raise those specific antibodies, but then you have to raise them and have this tag available on it as well. And that's the unique part. You have to have the secondary antibody able to bind to that primary. And then the secondary one, you can design it to have that fluorescent tag on it so that it glows if this primary one is present. And if primary one is present, so either the virus is present or we took it from serum, it would show a positive result. Right now they're doing RT-PCR to test this.